This is the story of Jodrell Bank, a story that happened by accident, a story of scientific vision and audacious engineering, of mud, steel and determination, of the 3,000 ton Lovell telescope catching the faintest of whispers from the edge of the universe. In 1945, when Bernard Lovell brought his second-hand radar equipment to Juggle Bank, there was no such thing as radio astronomy. Finding radar echoes from shooting stars instead of the cosmic rays he'd been expecting, he asked for help from an amateur astronomer, Manning Prentice. The fields at Juggle Bank filled with aerials and antennas the scientists were drawn to the site to take part in this new adventure, seeing the universe using radio waves rather than visible light. In 1947, these radio astronomers built the 218-foot diameter transit telescope and used it to discover radio waves coming from another galaxy. Lovell realised that to see more of the universe, he needed to observe more of the sky. He needed a huge dish he could turn, a dish he could point in any direction. His scientific vision was audacious and unprecedented. Engineers he approached thought it impossible until he met the bridge builder Charles Husband, who believed he could do it. But the challenges were immense. As the telescope rose out of the Cheshire countryside, new scientific discoveries demanded changes to the design. Each change cost money, and the budget spiralled out of control. Lovell was threatened with prison, and the workers down tools. Only a miracle could save them. On the 4th of October 1957, against a backdrop of mounting tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States, that miracle happened. Sputnik 1, the first ever satellite, was launched. And Lovell's giant new dish was rushed into service to track the rockets that had carried it into space. Overnight, Chudrell Bank became a household name. No longer an expensive mistake, it became an icon of scientific achievement, a towering success. Sputnik fired the starting gun in a space race between the two great superpowers, and Chudrell Bank kept a radio eye on them both. On the 20th of July 1969, we watched both the Soviet Lunar 15 mission and the Apollo 11 astronauts as they raced towards the surface of the moon. Our tracking showed how Neil Armstrong steered Eagle to a safe landing, whilst the Soviet craft failed and crashed into the lunar surface. Space tracking made the headlines, but this was never the telescope's intended use. Its real job was, and is, to study the distant universe. Our view of the sky is very different if we use radio telescopes. Instead of stars, we see the stuff between the stars. Electrons moving at near the speed of light, spiralling around the magnetic field of the galaxy. And we discover new things that we never knew existed. We can see through clouds of dust, revealing the supermassive black holes at the hearts of galaxies. We see pulsars, the collapsed cores of exploding stars, 
spinning and flashing like cosmic lighthouses. Our observations of the double pulsar have tested Einstein's theories to their limits. He's passed with flying colours. Radio waves travel at the speed of light. So the farther we look out in space, the farther back we see in time. We can even see the fading glow of the Big Bang. The faint hiss of radio waves that have been travelling for almost 14 billion years, revealing the seeds of the first stars and galaxies. And to understand these data from our telescopes, we construct huge simulations of the universe in our fastest supercomputers, growing our own model galaxies according to the laws of physics and exploring the effects of the mysterious dark matter and dark energy. Jodhra Bang was originally one man's vision, but his journey from deck chairs in the mud and army surplus radar to global projects connecting telescopes across the planet and even into space would not have been possible without the many scientists, engineers and others who have worked here and work here to this day.